Hello? Hello, Kirk. So I, I ultimately don't know how far you're willing to travel, but I've got these preformed concrete ceilings in my house, and I want them skimming nice and smooth. Yeah, that's definitely something we can sort. One second, we're there. Kieran! Get your toothbrush! We're going to Switzerland! Plaster the ceilings in Switzerland. Take one. Okay, so there was a bit more planning than just one phone call. So the customer found me on YouTube, and after quite a lot of messages back and forth, he decided the best thing to do would be to get us some flights and fly us out to do his job for him. We're on our way to the airport now, and uh, my we, we little suitcase is packed. I don't even know what's in it. My missus packed it, so it's like a lucky dip of what, what I'm going to be wearing when Make we got sure there. It's pink for him. All my hand tools are packed. Kieran's packed. Have you packed your hand tools, Kieran? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you pack your tools, Kieran? Yes. Yes. Very assertive. <laughs> His girlfriend packed it. <laughs> every pair, every every pair of going out jeans have got a hole in them, so he's not allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> and there you got your tools. I'm bored and child, rough, ready. Yeah. So the only, the only thing I'm worried about now is whether we'll, we'll actually getting getting from the airport to the destination is not a problem. The only thing I'm worried about is getting from where we currently are to the airport. My little bum's twitching because <laughs> we're crammed in this van. Like Kieran, because he's so big, was packed in like little sardines. We've, we've got flipping Turbo Gonzalez <laughs> driving us. It's it's like being on a flipping roller coaster. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see you. We'll see you when we get there. I didn't even order these, right? <laughs> Something's going on over there. They keep getting it wrong and they just keep bringing me more beer, so I just keep saying thanks. We're on our way to the Gold Coast in Zurich, and up until recently, Tina Turner lived just up the road from where we're working. I know it sounds tight, but Kieran can talk for England, so I asked the customer, do us a favour book us separate seats on the plane so I don't have to sit next to him. <laughs> but fair play, he does have his uses. That's it, just load them in the car for me, Kevin, all right? Here's our airport lift. So we made it, we got here, we landed last night and uh, we were welcomed by the customer at the airport, he come and got us. And then we just got up this morning and had some lovely breakfast. Now, look at that for the view. In fact, I'm going to spin this round and show you what we can see because this camera on the, on the front of the phone doesn't do it justice. We're so that there is the, um, that's the, the Alps. Look at that. How cool is that? And there's a house just across the street here, um, getting knocked down, uh, maybe in preparation for a new one. So, we are now just getting ready to start plastering some ceilings, so I'll show you. I'll show you what we're doing first. So this is the ceiling we're going to be doing. It's like, uh, let me just show you. It's uh, it's concrete being like formed on top of boards. Oh, I can't get away from it. But uh, look at this as well. Look at Kieran here. Kieran's rolling out the. Uh, Kieran's rolling out the building paper, and as he's doing it, it's following him. Look, look down, Kieran. <laughs> he's just, uh, he's just helping to make us look really professional. Right. I brought the trowel. My hand board. Brought the bucket as well. Just in case it was helpful. Oh, yeah. Got it. Brought the special scrim as well. Tell Mark Shepherd his product's going international. <laughs> In fact, if you're wondering what I brought, I'll show you exactly what I packed. I've got to get a few tools together to take with us. So, I'm going to take the bare minimum, uh, just the absolute essentials, basically. Now, apparently, we've already got a whisk and a mixing bucket over there. 
um, and a couple of little buckets and he's got me a hop up or something to stand on to be able to reach the ceilings off so all I really need to take is my hand tools now I like to travel light as you know I don't really like carrying a full tool a full toolbox with everything in it just literally the bare essentials so I'm going to take the handboard hawk shut up trowel uh, take some snips uh, for any beads that we need to cut I'm not taking a hammer and nails we'll just bed the beads on with plaster angle brush uh, bucket trowel only because I mean we could probably improvise with something but I just like to have a you know a decent sized scoop there's not going to be a spot board and stand there um, and I can't fit one in my suitcase so that's not the question uh, flat brush and small tool that's it just as long as i've got them with me i know i can pretty much do everything i can improvise for anything else that we need so they will be going in the case check this out look at that for a suitcase <laughs> no one's messing with me with a pink case are they? that's it in they go now um a few other little bits and bobs when i need some socks oh that's right. i'll tell you what i'm going to take as well um, I'm going to take my own water bucket, look at this, this thing's going to get a little go, someone sent me a bucket buddy, which is a, anyway, the good thing about this is, that'll just fold up and fit in the suitcase nicely, there we go, jobs are good. That's it, I'm packed. Let's go. Let's go. Right, so we've got a little surprise down here. Oh. Dee, dee, dee. There it is. We've got the good stuff. Okay, so everyone kept asking me as well. Everyone kept saying to me, oh, what's the weather like? Is it going to be freezing cold? You know, trust me, it's absolutely <laughs> roasty. So we've just, um, we've set the cables in the ceiling. Um, the customer channeled them out. Kier, is Kier, it's going to get confusing because the customer's called Kieran, as well as Kieran being called Kieran. So mm -hmm. that gets interesting. Uh, the customer channeled out some channels for this HDMI cable and his power cable for an overhead projector to go here to project onto a screen that's going to go on that wall and then move the light over here so we've just channeled them into the concrete ceiling now and embedded them in in some bonding and Kieran, my Kieran, is getting the SBR on the ceiling ready so we didn't know if we we're going to have to um, put some base coat plaster on the ceiling or we're going to have to SBR it and then, and then float it with bonding but I think um, we sh it's not too thick, we should be able to just skim straight over that so that's going to make the job a little bit easier so we're going to cut these beads down, these are the only beads that we could, uh, well that the customer got hold of for us here which are, I'll tell you what, they're, they're a little bit more rigid than what we've got in the UK I think, because um, everything's made from concrete over here I think these are designed to go on concrete and then there's enough clearance to sort of you get a, a back coat plaster on. So in the UK, because we have a brick walls and stuff, you find that the the thickness of plaster you can apply to our, our like render beads is a lot thicker. This is somewhere in between what we would call a render bead and a skin bead. It's sort of like in the middle. Um, very rigid as well. There's not much play in that, so I quite like them. We should have these over in the UK. We're just waiting for this to set. We've got some uh, some bonding coat up here, but it's... Uh, it's still wet so we, we can't skim that just yet <clears throat> as soon as that's done though we've got this gauge on but now it's like midday so we are just about to yeah i'm gonna put the camera around we've got some nice food prepared for us yeah thank you okay. cheers thank you oh it's a hard life kieran isn't it yeah Okay, we've been waiting for like two hours for this to come off. 
<laughs> but look now, when I'm poking this now, my finger's going in. There's a little bit of a slimy surface, but it's not poking right through to the background. It's, it's going hard behind it. So I know now, it's just a bit greasy on the top. We can start skimming, because by the time I do skim over this, it'll have firmed up. So I'm gonna get our fantastic English plaster, the best stuff in the world, and we'll start skimming. keep this where the projector's going to be screwed into but it hasn't managed to go all the way home so if your trial's sharp enough if you've got your trial nice and sharp you can literally just go there you go and then so you don't lose them put yourself a little earbud in there and you can plaster away without losing the little hole in them That's it now. The last little bit of the concrete ceiling and nearly gone. But it is pulling in quite quick, so I'm just showing the size of the ceiling. Can you? It's not, it's not the biggest ceiling I've ever done, but it's you know it's a fair old size. And it's warm. I'll you know, I'll spin the camera on so I can see you. Caleb's got no top on. Just turn the phone on. <laughs> <laughs> There's his toes. <laughs> So because of all the uh, because of all the indiscrepancies in the ceiling where the shuttering boards are held, you know, the concrete up, we're treating this like an Artex ceiling, so we're putting it on, flattening it off, we're gonna let it pick up and then give it a nice wet second coat. Just the same principles that we do the Artex ceilings. Now as you probably know as well, concrete is a really high suction background, but we've used SBR, so Suction is completely under control, there's not an issue with that. Otherwise, if we just use PVA glue, eh, I'd be running around like a Tasmanian devil now trying to do this before it's set. I can't believe, you know, this is what I mean, I can't believe. Everyone kept saying to me, Oh, is it going to be freezing cold? Is it going to be freezing cold? This is like... It feels like tropical fucking climate. It's red hot. Right, so we're just doing the first... First trial now. We've flattened it in. Um, we cheated because it's such a big scene and we used the speed skin to flatten it in. So now I'm just going to make the first... What would usually be the wet trial, but it doesn't need any water, so... That's it's coming down lovely now. Now ultimately tomorrow we're going to plaster this wall and um, these brick walls, so them ones down there and um, these ones here. So we're going to keep uh, this clean, but we're not really worried about a little bit of over stuff on that wall. And then we trestle. These are like, it's like a, just trying to stay alive on these. It's quite difficult because they've got a little bit of a box them. Oh, me back. This is it now. The polish, the final little push. There they all done. It's like glass. Trusty carbon steel. Just down to one man now. The other guys are giving. <laughs> young Kevin. I like young Kevin. Instead of helping me, he had to go and get a shower. He was a. Uh, he's worked too hard today, so he had to go and get a shower. He's drying his hair. It's just me left. Hey. So we're just going out into Zurich um, for something to eat and a, and a, and a beer. You know, my favourite, my favourite hobby, drinking beer. And we're just uh, we're in uh, Zurich train station. This place is massive. I mean, you can't see this. You'd think that that's just the end of it, but it's not. 
it goes like under and right down. The camera doesn't do it justice. We are like in one tenth. This, this section is like one tenth of it. This place is phenomenal how big it is. And it's just uh, it's quite impressive. All the plaster work, all the ornate plaster work around all the tops is just amazing. But uh, anyway, I'll have to go because I'm, I'm losing the lads. Some of the buildings are really ornate, really fancy. And then some of the buildings are just like really minimalistic and like just bare. A bit like the customer's house, it's like industrial minimalistic. <laughs> I've never seen a double decker train before. English pubs. <laughs> we get about, don't we? Yeah, so we are like in a, basically in the centre of Zurich now. And I don't know if you can see this place, but it's like everywhere is pretty much immaculate, just like. Every, I mean, oh, sorry, I said there's a little piece of litter on the floor there, but it's just so clean. Everywhere you look, it's, uh, it's lovely. I have often told your story about a way You can light a printer I'm back to the home. Just sat outside. Kevin, here's a wave. I can't tell you what that beer's called, but it was nice. Yeah. First day. I like it. And these guys were just like the best hosts. They just kept feeding us. Absolutely fantastic. Right, so day two. Now we're going to float skim some walls. We need to get this one plastered. We need to get this one plastered. This one and these ones over here. Now, because the brickwork's already been painted, uh, we can't, we, well, we couldn't use hard wall because that's for high suction backgrounds. So, because the bricks have been painted, um, we have to use bonding. Now, you don't just put bonding straight onto paint, it won't stick. So, we've SBR'd the walls first. I mean, they're not ultimately that, that bad. We possibly could have got um, a really thick coat of skim on the walls, but the thing is, we haven't got that much finish um, to be building out with too much. So, we're going to use bonding. Get the walls as straight as we can and then, and then skim. Now, when I say as straight as we can, we haven't brought derbies or feather edges with us. In fact, the only we could probably freehand it, probably freehand it and get it very close because, as I said, it's only going to go on very tight. Like, well, literally, a layer of finish is going to go on as thick as that. But we have got the speed skim, so we can sort of utilize that a little bit and get the walls as flat as possible. So. So, I did a little bit of research about this industrialist, minimalistic sort of look that some of these houses have in Switzerland, and it comes from the Neusbaum movement, which basically just means new house in English. Um, and the concept, it was sort of come about in the 1920s when they started using this um, style of building, and it didn't really take off, but then they had World War II, and it sort of stuck around a little bit. And then it sort of just took a bit of a hold in Switzerland. So there's a lot of minimalistic sort of buildings. But also a lot of really ornate buildings as well. Um, and ultimately the customer just wasn't so keen on the concrete ceilings. And thought that whilst I was there, I might as well do the walls as well. Seeing as that we were, uh, we were already plastering. There we go. Ta -da. So, if these walls were all over the place, in and out, then ideally we'd want to put two coats of this on. Put a coat on first to sort of build it up level. Let that go off, and then put another coat on and rule it off if you've ever had your darling. But because the brickwork is like almost perfect, we just put a nice little tight coat on um, just to just build out the discrepancies in the, in, the, in the bricks so we don't use much finishing plastic. Okay, so now we've got 
We've got that wall floated, that wall, that bit's floated, here floated. Now, what a lot of fellows do when they start using bonding for the first time, they try and rub it up with a float. You can understand this stuff goes sticky. The more it's going off, it starts to really stick. So if you try and rub it with a float, it is possible. There are plasters that do do it, and they can get away doing it, but it's not the easiest way to do it. The easiest way really is, you don't need to key this as such. The finishing plaster will stick to it, and you won't need to seal it as long as you do it the same day. If you skim it the same day, you won't need to seal the wall. So there's no keys necessary, and there's no seal necessary, as long as you skim over it the same day. And you don't need to hit it with a float with nails in it, like a nail float or a devil float. That's not necessary. The easiest way is to put it on meat, Rule it off if you need to rule it off. We didn't have to because these walls were dead straight. But if you end up with lines and they're a bit too big and you worry about skimming over them, just take a little bit of water, not a lot, just give it a little flick, just to lubricate the surface. Make sure your trowel's wet. And you can literally just trowel this up a little bit, you know. Now, you're never going to trowel up a smooth finish, so you can't cheat and think you can miss out skimming it. You can get it, you can get it fairly flat, so they're all a bit lying around it. And if you don't use water, what you'll find is it'll start to tear open like that. So Now get the skim on. This bonding has just gone off. There's still patches that are still a little bit slimy on the surface. So this is ideal just to skim over it now. This is the best time to skim on it. No seal required, no nothing. You can just go straight onto it. And if you leave this, if you leave this to start drying out for a couple of hours, then it'll start to get more and more suction. So you'll end up having to seal it. So ideally, just as it starts to change colour like this. See this wall here, look at this one. See the dark patches, just as the dark patches start to come, you know it's good to start skimming. That's about the right time to start. One thing we haven't got, which is a bit frustrating, is that we haven't, between us and customers, we haven't got a sweeping brush, so we can't brush it properly, but we're not making that much better, so it's not too bad. One thing I forgot to mention, in case you're wondering why they haven't got a sweeping brush, they've only just moved in. Okay, final finishing touches, show around. That's it. We're just going to clean out the, um, the socket boxes and brush the angles in and have a quick clean up. And that's it for today. We really see the, um, the mountains today. Let me just zoom in and show you. Look, see. Yeah. So this has been highly recommended to us, right? I've just finished work. Kieran had a nice shower in the customer's house and I've been brought to the lake. I've been brought to the lake to have a wash. But this is, where we're working is the Gold Coast of Switzerland. So it's highly recommended. This is like a, a proper little destination. I thought Switzerland was freezing. It's absolutely roasted. So anyway, I'm gonna have a little dip in here. If you haven't gotten onto my sense of humour yet, then I'll just confirm. I could have had a shower back at the house, but I wanted to get down here before the lake was closed off. So ultimately, the fellow that brought us over, wow, just organising the logistics, getting plaster over, booking our flights, it's been so hospitable, the house moved, they've only just moved in, they had two young children, I mean, hats off to the fella, he really pulled it out of the bag making all this work. <laughs> now I'll give you a little tip, Switzerland is German speaking, so the main phrase you need to know is bitter and gross as beer. <laughs> which got said quite a few times in this lakeside bar. So we've just come back. We've been swimming in the lake, drinking in the bars. We've come back for um, some of the finest beer I've ever tasted. Kieran's trying to eat a whole <laughs> pound of pistachios and um, we've got barbecue chicken. It's just like, this is ace. So today is day three and this is our last day and there was two great things that I come across. The first one was these builders over the road made the view even better by moving that house out the way. And the second great thing was I discovered a secret feature that all Swiss houses have. We're downstairs, we're in the basement of the house that we're working in and the customers just showed us. Look at this. This big 
solid door. This is part of the Swiss building code up until recently was that every house had to basically have um, a bunker built into the basements so that you could come down here and basically <laughs> lock yourself in. <laughs> it's like a... I said to Kieran, go on, you can go in first and um, Joseph Fritz will be down here shortly to lock you in. <laughs> So today is like our last day of working, and up, up to now, I've plastered the kitchen ceiling and uh, trying to get in above these units, it's, uh, it's really tight. And what we've done to try and conserve, uh, conserve as much plaster as possible, we've used the magic mix. So it's not something I usually do, but because we're running a bit low on finish, um, the first coat um, of plaster we put on the ceiling, we mixed it um, half and half with bonding coats just to try and preserve as much finish because we had some building out to do over the, the concrete and um, the indiscrepancies in the concrete so we've done that, that second coated now I'm going to smooth that off yeah the living room ceiling's drying out nicely the, the walls that we did are going to take a little bit longer so uh, the window wall there and uh, these walls over here and as well it, the day's just getting better and better the weather's turned a little bit it's a bit cooler today and we've got a little bit of rain and uh, this building that was blocking the view of the Alps is ultimately nearly gone now so we've got a great view we're just uh, concerned for these guys what they're gonna build there next they might they might build a big massive house see like um, these sort of new sort of modern looking houses that they've been springing up as opposed to the uh, traditional Swiss houses Okay. Yeah. Now we wanted to use up all the plaster we had so it wouldn't go to waste. So we managed to squeeze out a bit more plaster in the basement. Uh, there's going to be a wall built where that plaster ends to cover over that. So there's a space for an extra little room basically in the basement. Down the bottom part of the house. Getting in between all these um, these heating pipes and what have you. Oh, I can just about reach this off the floor as well, which uh, makes a nice change because I'm not that tall. That's it now, we are nearly finished. Uh, what we were going to do in the basement, we put this wall on here and this ceiling. We've got it up and above all these, um, as you can see, up above all these heating pipes. Like this, here we've got another, another trowel and a polish and that'll be it and then that's it for our time in Switzerland we're going to go upstairs enjoy some nice food off the barbecue and a few beers Kevin's looking forward to the beers aren't you? yeah he's messaging me oh getting te st I'm still getting jobs coming through from the UK <laughs> but uh, yeah that's it a few beers relax ready for our um, flight home uh, back to the grindstone tomorrow. Look at that for a burger. Now the customer's wife was uh, an Austrian lady. And I tell you what, she was only a little lady, but she had a massive heart. She's one of the kindest people I've ever met. So we're on our way back in the airport. It's like we've been away since five o'clock. There's a little train. It's like being on Jetsons. There's a little train to come and get us. Go on, get in. <laughs> so we're on this little uh, little Jetsons train. We've just realised there's, there's no driver. <laughs> and we're in a tunnel, but it looks like we're outside. This is bizarre. Come again soon. There is so much more to see. For now. We're doing about 60 mile an hour with no one driving. The customer stitched me up on the way home and seated us next to each other. 
Anything to declare? Yeah, only used British plaster. Anything? That's it. Back in the UK, back to the grindstone. We had a great time, didn't we, Kevin? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> hey, until next time, thanks for watching.